Hi everyone, welcome back to the VSO Gun Channel. I hope this video finds you well because I've got something special for you guys today. This one I've been intending to do for some time, but I have become appraised of a type of firearms owner that purchases a specific class of firearm for the express purpose of taking unethical shots on game animals in high brush. And I say that this way because I, I don't know if it was just because I was raised as a bow hunter, which means that you can't do any of this stuff. Like if there's a leaf, a little tiny dried out leaf hanging in the way, you can't take that shot because it's going to deflect your arrow. That said though, there are people that think because it's a firearm of a particular caliber that you could just shoot through everything and it's totally ethical and all that sort of stuff to really drive home how necrotic this mindset is. I have to take you to the impetus for today's video, Facebook group 450 Bushmaster, about a dude who intentionally shot through a tree. And I went back to find it, and it turns out that I found yet another person who thought that it was a good idea to shoot through a tree. Now, granted, they did take the animals. However, the mindset that you could just blast through a tree, and it's totally ethical, especially when you read the stories about finding the animal that they wrote but then i think down from that you've also got the person like this guy right here that would take this shot even though if he had just waited a few more seconds the animal would have walked in this clearing area right here but yeah he probably took this shot anyway so anyway i thought we would test what is a brush gun and what can we do with it now before i go any further and announce what we're going to be using for today's test I know that there's going to be people that are going to be like, do this caliber next. I will. If you guys make this video very popular, then all the calibers that you're going to list as, let's try 4570 and 450 Bushmaster and 350 Legend. You guys do your part. I'll do mine. 12 gauge shotgun. If there ever was a brush gun caliber, 12 gauge slugger would be it. Now, this one is very interesting because this one is... The Radical, as in Radical spelled improperly because it's from Turkey and Turks never really expect them to English well. But this is imported by Global Ordnance and that's how this thing found its way here. This is a semi-automatic bullpup shotgun. It is in a five round capacity. If we unpack it, bullpup shotgun means that we have moved the magazine and the action behind the trigger group. What that allows us to do is have a full length barrel but have a relatively short gun. You can see this whole gun fits on the camera. There's a lot of other features on here that you may not find in some other traditional shotguns, like the ability to put optics on it relatively readily. You can see there is a nice long Picatinny rail on there that allowed me to get that big scope on there that we're gonna use for accurate shooting today, as well as all the other accessories that you can see here. It is ambidextrous to a degree. Speaking of which, they definitely knew who they were sending this gun to because they set this gun for, up for a left-handed person and they're just absolutely trying to screw with me for today's video. It is a smooth bore barrel and does boast a choke system here at the front. So if you guys are interested in using this thing for other purposes besides launching slugs and buckshot, you have the ability to set this gun up for whatever purposes you want it to be. I think it would be really cool to have like a small little micro dot on the front there. But also if you want to put even bigger optics on this thing than... What I've currently got on there, we do have an adjustable cheek riser there. Anyway, enough yakking about the gun. The important thing is that it is a 12 gauge shotgun. We're going to shoot some slugs through it. Recap of external ballistics. Once the bullet leaves the muzzle, the only forces acting on it are wind and gravitational force. So it doesn't matter where we are on the trajectory of that bullet. The only thing that it's going to happen is it might slow down a little bit between you and the target if it hits the, a piece of brush farther down range which will further exacerbate everything that we're going to see in today's video. So in my part of the world, there are three components that make up brush, if you will. The first one would be what I'm going to call shoots of various persuasions. And basically these are just like little fibrous stalks that come out of the ground and they've got some kind of plant matter on top of them. They're more concealment than anything else because they form like thick mats between transitional areas from like fields to woods. The second medium we'll all recognize as <laughs> briar bushes. We've all kind of done those. If you're from the, a different part of the world, you might call them thorn bushes or something like that. But basically I used green briars. And then number three would be woody things. Bushes that come out of the ground or 
low-hanging branches, things like that. And for that today, we're just going to use some good old-fashioned small diameter cherry branches. To make sure that we're doing this right, I've got a decent quality slug that we're going to be using here today. This is a high brass Fiocchi two and three quarters arrow slug. You can see that it is definitely a hollow point. It is a one ounce rifled slug with an attached wad. Let's go shoot some stuff, guys. So first off, as you guys can see, I have a piece of printer paper set up in our apparatus here. And the purpose for that is to ensure that we are off the target enough that the blast from the gun isn't going to impact our target medium. And what I mean by that is these are rifled slugs. And because of that, this is a smooth bore barrel. There could be some leakage around the projectile. And I want to make sure that we aren't close enough to shred that piece of paper. If it doesn't shred the piece of paper, then we're far enough off and we should have uninhibited external ballistics. So here we go. As expected, did not shred the paper. So we're gonna call that far enough off. So here we are after the first shot, shoot a little bit high here, but as a note, the gun with that ammo shoots about inside this B ring. So of all the rounds I fired, I shot 10 in the prep phase, like zeroing and all that sort of stuff, and just to ensure that it was accurate. And with that ammunition, that gun is shooting everything within this B ring. So anything that falls outside that ring, we're gonna go ahead and call impacted by the medium. Shall we do science? And there you have it, still in the ring. Although, I don't know, does that look circular to you guys? We're gonna shoot it again just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Yeah, I'm going with not a fluke on this one. So we're gonna say no impact to external ballistics from those little shoots. Just in case somebody's like, oh, well, you know, you're just, you're just pushing it out of the way. No, I think not. Moving on up to briars, and actually this one was relatively challenging to do because they don't stack very well, but I think we got it decent. I also took the liberty of hanging up a new piece of cardboard. Yeah, throwing it off a little bit. That's definitely more than anything that we've seen both on and off camera. So we're gonna shoot that again just to make sure. Definitely some breakage there on that medium. That was interesting. Let's scrunch this down a little bit. Yeah, guys, so I shot twice on that one just to make sure because the first one came in here and then the second one came in here. So this is the first shot, the second shot, and third shot. And I could see it from that distance that it hit in the, in the, normal box but look how this hole looks and this hole looks this one's relatively round it's got a little bit of oblong going on it but that one is like going sideways through that thing unless maybe the wad is coming with it still i mean obviously this is in the high speed camera so we wouldn't be able to tell that anyway but man uh, i guys i don't know this does not look like it's flying straight moving up to branches I was really kind of concerned about how that gap stacked. Not a whole lot of effect on target, but it is out and it's definitely not flying straight. Much more substantial this time. So like I said, I was sort of concerned about that stacking, that little gap there. And you can see that after that second shot, I don't see any new impacts on this target. So we completely missed this target at 50 yards. We're gonna move it to half the distance. Okay, so clearly this projectile is breaking up. You can see that there are, there's nothing that resembles a slug hole here. Even though it hit in the same spot, also remember that this circle is no longer the acceptable circle because we're at half the distance. 
we would expect to circle half the circumference at 25 yards. And also the projectile should hit lower because we're inside the ballistic arc of a 12 gauge slug. So yeah, this is not, <laughs> clearly we're having issues with the, with the branches. Let's shoot it again. So I went ahead and shot it anyway, just to make sure I wasn't losing my marbles. And yes, indeed, we do hit low at that distance. Okie dokie, still oblong shaped. And again, I'd have to measure it, but I bet you that half the circumference, I bet you that's still out. I mean, I can draw it up and post to get half their circumference, but that's gonna be borderline, if anything. We're gonna do one more just to see. I'm gonna load the thickest branches I got. And this is our new guy right here. So clearly we are being negatively impacted. It's roughly, at this distance, it's gotta be roughly three times the acceptable cone of fire out of what we established at the beginning. So definitely having some issues with branches. Alrighty, boys and girls, I hope that you learned something in today's video. I know that I did. And chief among those is that we have to do this with some more calibers. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, sound off in the comment section down below with the caliber that you guys want to see. We're going to use that as a voting system down below. And then I absolutely am going to need your help to be able to make this thing popular because we are getting shadow banned here through the algorithm. So I need you to hit that share button and make this thing popular so we can do more testing on different calibers. However, what we learned is that with a 12 gauge slug that you cannot shoot through branches and you definitely can't do larger pieces of wood. And of course, you know, why the hell not, right? I moved my point of aim so that I wouldn't have to ruin the target or have any chance of ruining the target. And we've got no additional bullet holes. <laughs> so we basically defeated a 12 gauge slug. Also, briar bushes can indeed cause some level of interference on your ability to hit your target. So the best way in my mind to close out today's video is actually with a story. So I was about nine years old at the time, and it was the first time that my dad had ever taken me deer gun hunting. Now, that may seem a little old to some of you guys. However, we had a rule in my house, and that is you had to be able to climb the tree to be able to go deer hunting. And that's just the way it was sort of Spartan, to be honest. And we didn't have any of those newfangled... Uh, ladder stands that they've got today. In fact, I expressly remember asking my dad for a ladder stand. He said, well, real men just tr climb trees. And now coincidentally, I don't know that there are any lock-ons left on the property. I think they're all ladder stands now. Digression. First time I ever went deer gun hunting with my dad, there was a doe at about 70 yards and had a 20 gauge shotgun. Loaded with slugs, because that's just the way Ohio worked, is that was basically what you could hunt with. That and muzzleloaders. And there was a branch between me and the deer, and it wasn't a very big branch. It was I, I didn't even see it, to be honest. And I shot, and when I shot, that projectile hit that branch and came nowhere close to hitting that animal. So, I mean, we're talking that thing couldn't have been thicker than my pinky. And again, it was about halfway the distance between me and the animal. So this is absolutely a real world thing that does happen. I'm sure that you guys have stories of your own. Please feel free to share those in the description box down below. And special thank you to all of our Patreon people and subscribe star subscribers that help us make videos like this one possible. You should see some of their names on screen right now. So when the Gestapo come around, they know exactly who to go to.